Matthew 5. Verse um, 43, 44. Ye have heard that if it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. 48 says, Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. On uh, last Sunday, you know, we talked about growing up. I'm going to talk about growing up uh, this Sunday. And again, uh, the crowd is not bothering me. Uh, I, I want to give you what God gave me. Amen. I want you to receive it the way God has said it. Uh, growing up, and, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I did say this on, on last Sunday that growing up is. It's some kind of a painful thing at some point because we all all want to grow up and get out and do what we're going to do and kind of live our own lives or, and, and what have you. I, I talk to so many people now and they're putting their children out of the house and they, they, they're putting them out of the house. But they said, you know, I, I taught you uh, how to be a man, how to be a woman. I taught you how to live. I taught you how to do certain things. You're not going to live on me the rest of your life. And so I'm giving you a date. And on that date, you're going to have to leave here. Whether you got somewhere to go or not, you're going to have to leave this house. And a lot, of, a lot of the children now are not accepting the fact that they got to leave home. Well, growing up causes you to leave home. Grow, growing up causes you to leave a, a, a particular comfort zone, if you will. Uh, growing up causes you to get to a place in your life to where I start depending on God and what God has said to me. I start depending on my teaching. I start... Depending on my learning, I start depending on what had been instilled inside me. Growing up causes me to look at the responsibility, the security of my life. Because if I ever grow up, what it does for me, it causes me to gain life within its own self. When I grow up, I can touch life. I can, I can, I can uh, uh, get to a point where not just experiencing life, but I know where life is when it approaches me. Growing up causes me to step out on something that I don't see. Growing up causes me to trust God in every area of my life. Growing up even causes me to make a, make, make a decree and a vow unto a God or a man that I can't see or, or a spirit I can't see uh, to, to, to where I can continue to hold on even though I don't see it. That's what growing up causes me. So when I, when, I looked at, when I looked at Matthew 5 and it kept talking about love, and you know last week I told you that it's sometimes it's hard to love folk uh, that don't love you, but when you grow up, and understand the maturity that God has placed in your life. And, and, and really, and really, in essence, I, uh, in 2013, and like I said, I go a lot of places, I talk to a lot of people. There are a lot of people that really actually don't love each other. Amen. There, there are a whole lot of people that really don't love each other. There are family members that don't love each other. And if you are ever getting a heated discussion, you will find out they really don't love you. Amen. And you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. At family that's not close knitted together, you'd be surprised. At family that will not help one another, you'd be surprised. At family that would, would, would just say, you know, if I see him on the side of the road, I would not pick him up because he just not. You understand what I'm saying? And, and we keep saying that we love people, but actually we don't love people. I think that we love people that we are comfortable with. We never love people that we are uncomfortable with. We can't love the bomb on the street or the homeless man or the, or the woman that has been in jail or the woman that's been... We can't really love them because in our mind, we got a reluctancy in our mind that they are doing something different than what we're doing. And so the people can't understand you, they stop loving you. And so we develop in our, in our church community, we develop things that's comfortable to us and we blame it on God. We say we're doing this in the name of God. We don't, and, and I was reading, I was reading while, while, while the song was playing and even in this scripture, it says, it says this is in scripture in 38. It says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if a man will sue thee at thy law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy coat also. And then it says, If any man will sue thee, it says, And whosoever shall come, Compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. But it said, 
this what I this this what really caught my caught my thought process. It says, "Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that will borrow of thee, turn not thou away." I said to myself, "I said that means that I got to loan somebody when I don't want to." Uh oh. Where you can. 
can develop something within your own self to where you can do what you need to do, that money will come back to you. But because we don't have the mindset, because people keep telling us that we just can't do a certain thing, or, or man, you, you, you know, you, you, you're doing this, you're doing that, ain't no money over here, and you, you know, the white folks have done this, and the white, no, no, no. God said that I'll give you uncommon grace. Uncommon grace to create finance. Amen. He will, he will take the opportunity. And for the last few months, stuff has just come to me. Amen. People have come to me. People have shown me stuff. People have given me an idea or, or, or presented something to me. And I said, God, what is, what is this? And, and the other day, the other day, I, I, I was uh, going something in the shop there. And I think I told you all this. But I was going something in the shop there. And three hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars caught my mind. So I need three hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. God said, "Man, that's a lot of money." Hey, and that's more than a quarter for me. Hey, Amen. A quarter for me is two hundred fifty thousand, right? Mm -hmm. hey, Amen. So I need, I need three hundred and thirty. I need three hundred thirty-five thousand dollars, and I was laying on the ground, and, and God started showing me the money before me, and He showed me the opportunity before me. I said, "Lord, just let me have it, because I'm not." We got to understand that this is uncommon for us. It's uncommon for me to understand that now I need three hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars to go into an area to where you're going to give me some more uncommon grace for creating funding. Amen. Because see, what we actually have to look at is that we, if we love God and understand what God is doing for us, then what God does, God gives us the uncommon thing that the devil has already told us we could not have, and so we set out on our right and we. Because they had made a covenant with each other. 
Jonathan said to David, whatever you desire. And when Jonathan died, the Bible said that, that David searched out his son and when he got his son from another land because he got crippled. And he wanted to bring him back that he might take. He was, what he did was God raised up a friend. Uh oh. And, and, and how, the Bible said, when I grow up, when I grow up, when I really grow up, I can have accelerated favor just by growing up. Amen. I, if I grow up, I can, I can have an uncommon grace to create for me. And when I, when I grow up, God will raise up a friend to sow into my life. But I got to grow up. I can't have these big bodies. Because do you understand that when she said, if I ever stop crying, 
You gonna get it. She said, if I ever stop crying, I'm gonna stop caring. God said, if I ever take my spirit from me, she said, oh boy. God said, if I ever move my hand from you. I'm talking about growing up now. I'm not talking about a childish thing. I've been watching Rosalind there since I've been up there. Every now and then she kiss April on the cheek. Amen. She let April know I'm right here, I love you. But think about it. When God stopped kissing you on your cheek. Amen. Amen. We got to recognize that. I go in the loud, y'all. I ain't going. I'm serious. Y'all understand what I'm saying? God, God wants to grow up. Because see, if, if, if we don't recognize that it's in his, in his design to do what I'm doing, it's in his design for me to actually grow and, and get somewhere. It's in his design for me to get to the place where I need to be. And then the next thing is, God say that in me recognize that dwelling, there's always a confession of faith in me. I'm always, and in my confession, sometimes not just confession of faith, sometimes I just have a confession that, that I've done it all. I, I've shortchanged you, God, today. I, you know, I didn't do all I needed to do today, you know. And, and sometimes we, we, we do the same old stuff every day. God wants you to do the same old stuff every day. God wants you to recognize that you have that dwelling inside of him, inside of you. And then when you recognize that dwelling that you have inside of you, what God actually does, he allows you to do new stuff. I, I, I asked God, I asked God, I said, God, I want, a, I, want a, I want a different anointing in the morning than I had yesterday morning. Hey, 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 I, I, want, I want a different, I, I, want, I want some difference. Hey, Amen. I, 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 need, I need some difference in where I am. I, I need, you know, it, it's kind of like, uh, it, it's kind of like uh, 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 being black and all of us black here, right? Amen. But it's kind of like being black and all you do is hang around black folk. Amen. To understand life, you got to hang around some more kind of folk. Amen. You got to get around somebody. You got to understand their language. I, I taught a class. I taught a class the other, other week in Texas and, and I talked about the five love languages. Amen. And I said this. I said this April. I said this. Y'all didn't catch this. Y'all didn't catch this. Being you really didn't hear me up there. Amen. But this, I, I said this. I said, a husband and a wife ought to have, ought, ought to have languages that they can understand each other. Amen. Because, see, what happens is that when foreigners come to our country, just like this girl came here from Nigeria, she sung to us the other night. You got, you got